Hello Curry County, I'm Mindy Turner, your family and consumer science agent. We are starting a brand new series talking about high altitude cooking. One of the questions I get a lot uh, working with the Extension Service, and you guys know, Family Health and Wellness, we take questions and we try to help people make sure they're getting the absolute best for whatever they need to do. And one of the questions I get a lot is related to high altitude cooking and the difference between different places around the country. All of New Mexico is considered high altitude, so that's an important thing to remember. If you're in the state of New Mexico, you're cooking, you're doing stuff, you're going to be high altitude. So if that recipe is not already adjusted for your elevation, you're going to want to look into that to get the best quality product that you can. I get calls again from people around the country who've moved somewhere else from New Mexico and now things aren't exactly how they expected them to be. One of the things I have found, a lot of the recipes that I like to use are from my grandmothers and my great grandmother and they've passed those down and so even comparing into a regular cookbook with my handwritten ones that I've gotten from her you can see where they've already made those altitude adjustments whether they really realize that's what they were doing or not they've made those concessions made those notes because trial and error taught them that this was the best quality product that they could get so be aware when you're looking at recipes if they are or aren't already adjusted and what maybe you need to do because I do get that a lot well you know, my grandmother made this forever and now I can't get it to turn out right well where did she live oh well she was from Georgia well we're in New Mexico things are just not the same so it's just important to remember elevation is based on sea level so everything starts at that sea level and as we go up and down that's kind of what affects it and tells us what we are at most of your adjustments, we're going to look at 3,000 feet, we're going to look at 5,000 feet here in Curry County. Some of us are right on that 5,000 feet mark. Now you can use, there's a lot of online tools, some really cool fun stuff. I'm sure you can go look at uh, topography maps at the library, but you can actually find, even as pinpoint it down to your address, what your actual elevation is. What I can tell you is looking around the county, in this month's newsletter, or um, there's actually a chart in the publication that we're going to refer to a lot, High Altitude Cooking out of New Mexico State University. It's a fantastic fact sheet. It was done by one of our uh, FCS food science specialists and one of our home economists who since now retired. Fantastic ladies who know their stuff. And so I highly recommend you're going to get some excerpts of that from me in our newsletter and as we talk through these videos, but I recommend you go online, grab that uh, publication or contact my office and I'll be glad to mail you out a hard copy of that because it's really good stuff and it brings it all together for you. Uh, they have a chart in there that looks at the elevation of most of the cities around New Mexico. I broke that down specifically for Curry County in our chart. And so I'm gonna make sure, try to get this close enough. You guys can kind of see, okay, where we are in Curry County. And you can see kind of when we look at even this area here around Clovis, we're kind of the low spot. So as we go out uh, and about in different directions, Clovis, Texaco are kind of that lower part. As you go north into Grady and up that way, you start going up in elevation. And so as you go again, and even further north out toward the Caprock, your elevation just continues to increase. So you can base how you adjust and what you need to do on where you live and what your elevation actually is. Now I've been telling my extension clubs, I like science, I think it's really cool to watch. Most of the time I want to follow the directions and have it work. You don't want to have to work that hard to figure out why it's not working. But with some of our high altitude stuff, we've got some tips and some things that are going to be helpful to you, but sometimes it's just a matter of trying it. We know the weather affects how we cook. Humidity may uh, be a factor in what we have to do and in, in how our baking turns out, things like that. That's separate from elevation, but it does have some impact. So specifically when we talk about elevation and how it affects us, the uh, atmospheric pressure, of course, is going to be less on the things that we're cooking at higher elevations. But our water is going to boil faster. So that means things heat quicker. So it's important to remember the temperature is the temperature. 
okay? 50 degrees here is 50 degrees anywhere else, but it feels different. And we all know that when we've traveled or gone anywhere and some days it's like, oh, well, it's only, uh, it's 60 degrees, but I'm freezing, you know, because it feels different depending on where we are. And a lot of that has to do with the air pressure. That's what happens with our cooking. So the temperature is the temperature, but how our ingredients and what we're cooking reacts to that temperature is different based on uh, where we are in our elevation. So thinking about where we are within the county, the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about is things that are cooked with moist heat. So when we do a roast, when we do stews, when we're cooking our vegetables, okay, potatoes, carrots, all of those things are gonna be affected by the size. I mean, and obviously we know I have this great big carrot and I have this little tiny carrot. This one's gonna cook way faster than this one. There's just not as much of it. But when we look at how elevation might affect that, particularly if we're not using some type of a pressure cooker. Now this is an actual old school pressure cooker. This is an electric one. You can see what I remember again, my grandmother using, didn't have the feet on it. It actually sat on the stove top. You can still use these, you can still purchase these. And then of course, what a lot of us are more familiar with now are these instant pots, which have a pressure cooker feature on them. So the thing I will tell you about these Instapots is you need to read in the book, whatever kind you have that has a pressure cooker feature on it that you're using, read in the book because some features, parts of it, or types of things you might wanna do with it are not recommended at high altitude because the water boils faster, it doesn't get the heat up to what you need, for instance, to seal a jar if you're doing water bath canning. So it would not be recommended to do that with this product. So you need to be aware how your elevation is going to affect how you can use this appliance because the pressure is what changes and that's what makes a difference in our cooking. Because we're adding pressure back in, in using these types of devices, we may be able to cut down on some of that cook time. But as a general rule, those things that we're cooking with, again, with that moist heat, with the kind of the steaming idea, are gonna take a little longer to cook here than they would at a lower elevation. Okay, so a good example of that, we can talk about our eggs. Okay, so I just have a few eggs here. You know, these are not cooked, so we're not gonna crack them or do anything weird with them right now. But when we talk about, I'm gonna use my cheat sheet because like I said, this is one of those things. I don't wanna get off and tell you the wrong thing. Um, but so for a traditional three minute soft boiled egg, we hear people talk about that, three minutes, and we're all like, oh, I can't cook an egg in three minutes. And there's a reason for that. It's gonna take you five to six minutes to do that at our elevation. So what we're doing with those. And then if you wanna make that hard boiled egg, it's gonna have to cook a little longer too. And like I said, we're quite close to that 5,000 mark, so we're gonna start looking at, at around that 4,500 to 5,000 elevation for what we need to do. So basically, if you're wanting to hard boil those eggs and you're gonna start them off cool in your pan and put just room temperature water, generally tap water, to cover them, and then you're gonna start them to simmer, get them to boil, start them to simmer, and then it's still gonna take about 25 minutes for them to get hard boiled. Now that's another thing, people do those I know in their, uh, their pressure cookers, uh, whether it's this type or, or the newfangled kind of uh, appliance type, however that works for you, but you still just need to make sure that you're adjusting for that appropriate time. Because again, the water's gonna boil faster, but it may not be as hot. And we're gonna talk about using your thermometers and figuring out what temperature things are at in the next couple of episodes for this series. Hopefully this gets you started thinking about being at a higher elevation and what you need to do to begin to adjust for high altitude cooking. I will see you right back here next time. Thank you.